Hey guys, welcome to Bible class for Monday. All that this Bible class is for this time is your verse activity because I'll be introducing your verse right now and then you need to refer back to the Bible video from month, from Friday um, to be doing the rest of your um, Mormon study. Okay, so whatever you didn't do on Friday with the requisitos that were given on Friday in the Bible video, hopefully you wrote those down or if you've see, you haven't seen the testimony video that you need to go back and watch that. So it's there for you to refer to. It's not necessary that you go back and watch the video if you um, wrote down your notes and know exactly what is required of you for that um, topic, okay? So let's pray and then we'll be introducing Proverbs 15, 18 today, which is about long suffering. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today and thank you for this week, Lord. I pray that you be with each of the students this week as they... Um, they get started on their schoolwork, Lord, and have other things that are going around, um, going on around their lives, Lord. I pray that you um, help them to focus, give them the strength, open their hearts, Lord, to not only um, learn the academics, but to learn from your word and learn from your principles in the different classes that they see this week as well. We love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we've been studying the fruits of the Spirit. Last week we studied what is love. One that's very highly connected to what is love is what is long-suffering. Okay, long-suffering is patiently enduring suffering rather than being unkind to others. Okay, you can tell what long-suffering is from the name. It suffers long, okay? Um... The verse that Miss Susan chose to represent this is Proverbs 15, 18. And there's a lot of verses that you could choose to represent this, but this is a good, um, very good a a example of what it means to be long-suffering. Long-suffering is like patient, what it means to be patient, okay? Suffer long, be okay with it, be tranquilo about it. So look what it says in Proverbs 15, 18. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth, appeaseth strife. Proverbios 15, 18, el hombre iracundo promueve contiendas, mas el que tarda en airarse apacigua, apacigua la rencilla. That's like a Brazilian word I've never heard in my whole life from the Spanish um, version, but that is okay. But basically, what is this verse saying? If you're a man, if you're a person that acts on his anger, especially quickly, um, then what are you going to do? You're going to cause more contiendas. You're going to cause more problems, okay? But if you're slow to anger, okay, you're long-suffering, it takes you a long time to really get explode, then you are going to hold off and prevent problems. Okay, so I just want to talk about that um, today. That verse, first of all, like I said, is a great verse for it. What? Because Proverbs is always like that. You, It's like you get to choose. Which kind of person are you going to be? Are you going to be the foolish one or are you going to be the wise one? Are you going to be the Christian or are you going to be the non-Christian? Are you going to be the one that causes problems with your anger? Or are you going to be the one that prevents problems because you don't get angry quickly? What kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be known for causing problems because you can't um, you can't control your anger? And that comes in many different forms, you guys. It could be a form of someone that um, explodes physically, like it makes a show about it. But it can also be somebody that explodes quietly and maybe like directs comments at people that hurt, you know, because you can't control your mouth or does things without thinking because of how angry you are, you know? So it doesn't have to be an explosive person. Now, obviously, what, the first one that comes to mind is a person that's explosive. But then, like I said, it's somebody that also like digs at you with their comments because they just get angry in their heart and angry in their being that the way for them to act out is that they say something nasty, that they do something nasty, and, like, and the third one is the actions that they're maybe vindictive, that, you know, the person gets angry and has rancor quickly and is set out to have vengeance on that person that caused the anger without thinking 
logically, without thinking reasonably, right? That you can't reason with that person. And that's the fourth type of person is the person that makes decisions based on anger quickly that, you know, oh, now I'm not going to work here anymore. Now I'm not going to live here anymore. Now I'm not going to um, be with that person anymore. Now I'm not going to be friends with that person anymore. And you make, you make definitive decisions quickly based upon your anger. And guys, those, those decisions never come back with good fruit if you're making all of your decisions based on your emotions, okay? So a long-suffering person is someone that can control their emotions and not act on them. Here's some notes that I do want you to take for your verse activity today, just three things, okay? Number one, long-suffering is connected to love, okay? Long-suffering is connected to love. It's a characteristic of love. If you look at 1 Corinthians 13, if you start in verse number four, it says right there, el amor es sufrido, es benigno. El amor no tiene envidia, el amor no es jactancioso, no se envanece, no hace nada indebido, no busca lo suyo, no se irrita, no guarda rencor. No se gozo, no se goza en de la injusticia, mas se goza de la verdad. Todo lo sufre, todo lo cree, todo lo espera, todo lo soporta. Okay, so those parts right there. El amor es sufrido. Todo lo sufre, todo lo soporta. Okay, so that's a person that can go a long time without saying that's it. Yeah, basta with this person, with this, this situation, with whatever it is. Okay, um, so long-suffering is connected with love. Number two, long-suffering um, affects your actions. Long-suffering affects your actions. Like we said, we can see that in Proverbs 15, 18. But I want to share another verse with you from that Proverbs, Proverbs 15, 1. Proverbs 15, 1. Very famous verse that we talk about. La blanda respuesta quita la ira, mas la palabra áspera hace subir el furor. Okay, so you could cause other people to be angry as well with the way that you respond. So if you're long-suffering, then you're probably going to have a better chance at having a conversation with somebody that might be upset with you, right? Somebody comes to you and is ready to explode, but if you answer back nicely because you can suffer long, then they're probably not gonna be on the defensive, but if you come on the defensive, what's gonna happen with them? They're gonna come back that way as well. In every situation where there's an argument and a fight with somebody, a contienda with somebody, a disagreement with somebody, you have to look at your side of it and say like, okay, did I cause more anger than I should? right? We can't control the actions of somebody, but we can control if we provoke them or not, right? So long-suffering affects your actions. And then the last one is that long-suffering comes out of the heart. Okay, honestly, you can't fake being a patient person. <laughs> you can for a while, but it's going to become completely obvious. It has to come from your heart. So the two verses I want to share with you on that one is Proverbs 423 Proverbs 423 which I'm not doing well getting there but let's see we know this first very well I think sobre toda cosa guardada guarda tu corazón porque de él mana la vida okay you got to keep your heart guarded you've got to be putting things into your heart that um will produce patience with people. For instance, um, well, first of all, let me read this other verse with you and then we'll talk about that. Luke 6, 45. El hombre bueno de buen tesoro de su corazón saca lo bueno. Y el hombre malo del mal tesoro de su corazón saca lo malo. Porque de la abundancia del corazón habla la boca. So if you're putting rencor for somebody in your heart, if you're putting unforgiveness into your heart if you're keeping your heart full of this anger towards people towards life towards god towards situations 
and you're not taking care of that in your heart, then what's going to happen out of your mouth? Nothing patient, nothing long suffering, nothing joyful, nothing kind, right? So it has to start in the heart. Okay, so those are just some notes today. So what I want you to do for your um, verse activity is either write your verse three times in English and in Spanish or just send me your video telling, um, saying your verse memorized. And then I want to see your notes. And then I just want you to write quickly five things, five phrases, just a list. Five things you think that you could do to become a more patient person. I've given you the principles behind it, that patience um, is connected to love, it affects your actions, and comes from your heart. I've given you the principles. Now, how would you apply that to become a more patient person? Because all of us in our lives have an aspect of our life where we're not patient patient people, whether or not it's with your family, whether or not it's with your friends, whether or not it's with people that you don't know very well. It doesn't matter. We all have um, an aspect of our life where we could work on patience. So what are five tips from your biblical perspective that you could become a more patient person? Okay, there's your first activity today. Have a great day, guys. Bye.